Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new episode of Motion Tutorials, and today we're talking about how to get rigged characters into After Effects using Element 3D. So what we have here is this final little animation where there's a whole line of these characters doing this jump kick at different times, and we're bringing this in using Video Copilot's Element 3D plugin. And if you're new to Element 3D, one really cool thing that I can do is bring in 3D objects or create 3D objects in After Effects and let us move our camera around and add lights and things like that, and even do some animation on the 3D objects. But getting rigged characters in is a little bit of a step up, and there's some really specific things to keep in mind and ways to do this. Now, how we're going about this in this case is I have this 3D animation built in Cinema 4D with our skeleton and our rigged character. So if you're coming from a different 3D app, that's totally fine. You could be building a character in a different app. And if you're not familiar with rigging characters, if you wanna avoid that altogether and make this a lot easier, how I built this 3D character is using a new app called Adobe Fuse, where you can build a custom 3D character and really manipulate and edit the settings and geometry, and then spit that out as a rigged character bring it into Adobe's Mixamo web app and add some animations like this jump kick or this baseball pitch one or whatever you want and download that as a file and bring into Cinema 40 or your 3D app. And if you wanna learn more about that, be sure to check out that whole tutorial that I put together on how to build a character in Fuse and bring it into Cinema 40. And that would get us to this point where we have a rigged character but now the challenge is, what if we want to bring this into After Effects using Element 3D and leverage some of the great stuff that Element 3D brings to the table, like the quick rendering and our particle replicator, where we could have multiple copies of this animation playing at the same time. So if you're familiar with Element 3D, it seems like it should be pretty straightforward, but there's some really specific things. So let's jump into it. Let's make a new composition in After Effects, and I'll make a new solid, and I'll call this E3D, and I'll put Element 3D onto it go into scene setup, and I'm on Element 3D version two. That's important for this because things are gonna work a little differently if you're on the older one. Now in version two, you can import Cinema 4D files natively. So I have this Cinema 4D file and I could just bring it directly in. So I'll go to file import and I can do 3D object or sequence. I'll do object since we're doing a Cinema 4D file and I can just grab that Cinema 4D file directly, go to import. It's gonna check load animation and load up all our textures correctly, go to okay. But now you'll notice it doesn't bring in the animation of that character. It brings it in in its default T pose. So if we go to OK and look back in After Effects, we have our character. It comes in with all the materials. We can move the camera around and get it set up. But that animation isn't there. And that's because while we can bring in Cinema 4D files and animation into Cinema 4D, if we take a look at the documentation that Video Copilot has about this, at least as it is currently, we can bring in the animation, but it's just position, scale, and rotation animation in Cinema 4D. So we're just talking about these basic coordinate things. So if we're doing more complex things like this rigging, it's not gonna bring in those keyframes and that method isn't gonna work. So what we need to do is a little bit of a different method if we want this actual animation to come in. We need to export an OBJ sequence, which we could do as early as version 1.5 of Element 3D. But natively in Cinema 4D, we can't do that by default. So what we need to do is get a plugin that lets us export that. And you can find that mentioned also in the Video Copilot documentation. And there's this plugin called Plexus OBJ that lets us export OBG sequences out of Cinema 4D, which is great. So if you don't have that, grab that. You can just look that up and then you're gonna wanna download it, unzip it, and it's gonna give you your plugin. And then you're just gonna wanna find your Cinema 4D folder and application. So if you're on a Mac, it'd be Maxon and whichever version you're on. Go into plugins and just drop that in there. Restart Cinema 4D. And now if we take a look, we can go to file, export, Plexus OBJ sequence. And if we do that, it's gonna open up our export window and we can just locate a folder that we wanna export this at. I'll make a new one and call this Kicking Zombie version five. Go to save. And that's gonna very quickly render those out. If we take a look at our folder, now we have a folder of each frame of that animation. So now if we go back into Element 3D, we can just delete this, 
remove unused materials. And again, I'll go to file import and this time I'll go to 3d sequence. And now I'm going to grab that folder and go to import. I want to make sure I check use auto normals. That's really important. Otherwise it's not going to show up correctly. And I can go to okay. And you'll notice that now it says 41 frames and I can take a look at this. And now if I go to okay and play through this, you can see now we have our animation of our character as an OBJ sequence and that's all working great. Now you notice that the materials didn't come with, and if we go into scene setup, it's just one solid material. So if we're using this method, I tried a lot of different options and I wasn't quite able to solve this as I had hoped for to bring over the exact materials when we're doing an OBJ sequence. But if we want to just do some fun animation on this character, we could load up some materials that we have in element 3d, maybe like this blue wireframe or any of these and go to okay. And then we can get some cool looking materials. Maybe if we're doing some sci-fi thing. Now, the cool part of using element 3d for this is if we go to our group and our particle replicator, I could change this to any of these settings like a grid and make this a five by one by one grid. And then I can get multiple copies of these that are all going to play through that animation and under particle look again, if we're in version, at least 1.5, if we go to baked animation, we could change our animation mode from something like loop to a random loop. And then they're all going to play at different speeds. I could change the playback speed if I wanted to play faster or slower. Let's say it goes faster at, at 150%. And then we get our cool little character animation in element 3D. If we wanted some motion blur, we could add a new adjustment layer and even drop on pixel motion blur. Or if you have really smart motion blur by revision effects or RSMB, we could drop that on. That's going to give us some cool post-production motion blur that's going to look accurate. And if we play through a bit of this, now we have our jumping characters animating at different times using Element 3D. So there are a lot of different methods to do this. And I was trying to get these textures snapped onto this exactly how it came out. There's another method to this if you want to try something else. If we grab a different plugin called Steady Bake that we could look in. In Cinema 40, if we have everything in a group and go to plugins after we install that, also a free plugin and go to Steady Bake Playmate and go to OK, that's going to take our animation and record it just as one solid object. So I'll save this as a new Cinema 40 file. And in Element 3D, if we instead brought in just that Cinema 40 file and again, load animation. It'll bring in those textures on our character. It'll at least get it into our starting pose, but it doesn't bring in the animation on the character's rig. So that would at least get us there. If maybe you have a character in a pose, I also tried taking this. And if we go to object, bake object, we can bake out our textures, which gives us this, but because of the new physical render in element 3d, that wasn't quite working either. So I couldn't solve that one. If you have a recommendation for that, or if you were able to figure it out, definitely let me know because that was the idea, but I felt like this was getting close and I didn't want to not make the tutorial. If you're really just trying to get 3d characters from cinema 40 into after effects, and that's really important to you as an alternate method, I'd recommend just bringing that cinema 40 file in directly in after effects using Cineware, which works starting in after effects creative cloud subversion CC. So we just brought that in directly as a cinema 40 file and make a new composition. It's going to import that drop on the Cineware effect. So if you're really just trying to get your characters into after effects as they were set up in cinema 40 or built from Adobe fuse using the quickest way, you could always do that. That's an option. So there's lots of different ways to do that. But if we wanted to leverage element 3d, as far as I know, we can do that. There's just a little bit of tweaking with the textures or just bringing it in the pose that you want. So there's lots of different options. You can definitely get animating rigged characters into After Effects using 
Element 3D and do some fun stuff. And if you want to learn more about setting up custom characters and really more about this whole workflow of building custom characters in Adobe Fuse and spitting them out to Photoshop or the Mixamo web app to get them into Cinema 4D with some animations, be sure to check out the other tutorials I have starting on that topic. It really helps alleviate a lot of the difficulty that might come with rigging characters, adding animation, painting weights, and all that sort of frustrating 3D character stuff and cutting that out and let you just focus on the fun stuff. And then you can bring them into After Effects using Cinemaware or Element 3D or do whatever you want with them once you have them. So this was a fun little one to set up of you know, what do we do with these characters after we have it? How can we get it into After Effects? I hope you learned a bit from it. And if you figured out that texture problem, definitely let me know in the comments. I tried everything I could think of. And as always, be sure to subscribe on youtube.com slash Sean Frangella if you want more episodes of motion tutorials where we cover topics in 3D animation, visual effects, and motion graphics. If you have questions on this, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. Thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.